What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games we're checking out Tome, Tales of Majayal. This game came out on Steam a year or two ago and it still had lots of updates. The developer's been fiddling with it now for like, I don't even know, this game has started out as a mod for Angband, or like a total rebuild of Angband like a decade ago when I was probably first getting out of high school, or at least like starting off with my first work experience, and then it became Tales of Middle Earth, but then they got a cease and desist, and so that's how it became Tales of Majayal. In my opinion, this is one of the best roguelikes ever made, and while it's not necessarily new, if you're into roguelikes, which I have a sneaking suspicion a large proportion of the people in my audience are, Roguelikes always do pretty well around here, and I enjoy the hell out of them. Tales of Majayal is one of those games that you can't miss. It's completely free, from the developer's website if you wanted to go and get it there, or they have like a five, six dollar Steam version that comes with some new skins and some new kind of appearances for the characters, but other than that, you know, there's not too much of a difference between the two types as far as I know. So anyways, I'll try to put a link to both of those up so that you can check them on out, but if you're looking for a roguelike that has depth, and it'll take you weeks to just learn like one of the classes, but it's also fast-paced and hard-hitting kind of Diablo style with loads of loot, loads of enemy monsters. You're not too worried about graphical aesthetics. You may like this game a lot. I think the Tales of Majayal is probably, after Rogue's Tale, it's probably my favorite roguelike that I've dumped the most time into, so why not do a little video on it to show it off to all of you. Let's go ahead and start off with a new game. I'll try and do my best to give you guys advice as we play. I've been playing this game for probably five or six years off and on. I go through phases with it. So, like, I forget things. So if it seems like I don't know a certain mechanic or something like that, it's just because I haven't played in a while. And I go through rotations. This game is kind of like... I guess it's kind of like Mountain Blade for me. I won't play it for a year or two, and then I'll binge out for like a thousand hours straight on it. It just comes and goes. As far as making a character goes, if you're making your first character, every single, there's loads of races and loads of classes in this game. There's also modifications of classes that you can unlock as you do certain achievements in-game. You'll get variations on the classes. And so, like, you have the Wilder over here, you have the Summoner, you have all kinds of cool stuff that you can unlock. There's plenty of things to work on as far as persistence goes. There's also legendary items you'll find that transfer in between characters when you die. So for example, once we start out, you'll see I have a chest of transmogrification. That's a permanent item. Once you find that, you just have that forever and it just streamlines the game and makes it a lot easier. Uh, let's come up with a name. I always go with Euclangor. There we go. We're going to be Euclangor the Barbarian. And we'll be a human because I actually recommend, so the differences between races, elves tend to be a little bit more magic inclined, although not necessarily. Anything can be anything in this game. Halflings are surprisingly good for first time players. They've got really good HP. They're hard to hit. They do perfectly fine damage, like, they're pretty good. Dwarves are really good for new players. Uh, dwarves also have the benefit of them having multiple lobby dungeons. So in this game, it's got kind of an MMO-style map where every race starts out in their own town with their own quest and their own dungeons, and then from there you break off and you can explore the world freely. The dwarves are nice because they have two lobby dungeons. Uh, instead of having one dungeon for new players, they have two before you move out into the world. So you tend to level up a little bit higher with them before you get out into the greater world and start deciding what you want to do. But for the sake of this playthrough, we are going to do humans. And with humans, we have two different options. Uh, we have hires and we have cornax. Cornax are like your average run-of-the-mill humans. And then hires are basically like elder humans. Uh, they have a pure bloodline, which means that they get stat modifiers, and then they just have magic that runs in their veins. They're not too much different. They get a little bit of extra XP. Or I'm sorry, they get a little bit of extra HP compared to normal humans. Uh, but aside from that, they've got a few extra stats going for them. But not really. I mean, they're they're a cool class. We'll try them out actually. And then in the case of this game, I would recommend you play a melee class until you get used to the game. Playing as a mage is definitely more, it's a more contemplative play style where you've got to lean heavier on skills to figure out what you want to do. Whereas if you play like a warrior class, it's fairly straightforward. Walk into the enemies until they die. Uh, the recommended classes, in my opinion, for a new player is a Berserker and Bulwark. Bulwark is basically a heavy armor clad kind of, I guess, Titan. He's just a dude with a ton of armor. He uses a sword and board, and everything he has is kind of reflective. And so when he gets hit, he gets bonuses to hitting back. Or like when he gets hit, he negates the damage entirely or starts regenerating. He's got all kinds of random things that basically make him like next to impossible to kill. 
Uh, the Berserker is the offensive version of the Warrior in this game, using two-handed weapons, able to smite down five enemies at a time with like whirlwinds and stuff like that. Pretty cool class, although this class right here does suffer a little bit when it comes to resilience, so easier to kill than the Bulwark for sure, because the Bulwark is getting a fat bonus to his armor from a shield and all of his abilities, which even further raise his armor, making it very, very difficult for the enemy to find purchase. Uh, we'll go with the Berserker this time around just to make things interesting. We'll put this on roguelike mode, and then we need to customize a little bit. I'd like to change my hair up. I just, I'd like to change my hair up. Let's go with that hair right there. That looks good. And then we can also have like a mankini if we wanted to. It's not necessary, but it is an additive option just in case you're into that kind of thing. And there we go. So now we've got a beard, we've got some hair, we're ready to roll. Let's play the game. Uh, the last thing that we're going to need to do is we need to allocate our starting skill points and our starting strength points and all that kind of stuff. So we've got attributes, we've got class skills, and then we've got generic skills over on this side. This game has an incredibly in-depth character building system. These trees are not the only trees you will get access to, too. As through quests and whatnot, you'll learn other skills that allow you to gain, like, one of the trees from a different class and stuff like that pretty frequently. And so every playthrough kind of goes a little bit differently, but you sort of want to have in mind what you want to do with the character before you get started. I like to start out with the simple stuff. I like to level up Rush first, which is basically a dash to the enemy and a hit that puts them into dazed mode and lets you open up on them. I would recommend most of your early points go into strength when you're a new warrior because you're going to need to get this up to at least like 26 or 30 for a lot of the stuff you want to do. We have an ability called Wrath of the Highborn that we start out with. It apparently allows us to increase all of our damage by 11% and reduce the damage taken by 11%. Uh, we don't get a category point. That's the difference between these guys and the Kornak. Uh, the Kornak humans get a category point, which means you can buy some new inscriptions. You can buy, like, a new category if you really want to. Wow, that crow was really loud. That crow deafened me. Good lord. And so anyways, we've already put in our class points into some dashing abilities. As far as generic points go, I guess we can go with vitality. What this does is when you hit 50% health, you get a fat regen effect that gets put on your character. Makes you a little less likely to die. Uh, we'll save the changes. Welcome, you Clangor. You are one of the higher, the most powerful and respected lineages of men. Many of your kind serve as high counselors in various allied kingdom cities, but not you. You want more. You need to prove your worth and make your own place in the world. You've decided to venture into the old and wild places of the world looking for ancient treasures and glory. You have come to a land called the Dearthfields on the western border of Thaloran Forest in search of the Trollmire. It's an old forest infested with trolls and all kinds of wild animals. To the west lies another dangerous place, the old ruins of Corpul. You've heard the, ru uh, the caverns below it are infested by vermin and undead. Yeah, we can handle that. That's easy peasy. Alright, so for the sake of this playthrough, you can play with a mouse, but what the game does is it uses an auto-move system, so it's going to look like I'm teleporting all over the place. It's going to be hard for new people to, like, follow, essentially, so I'm not going to play with the mouse. I'm going to play with the number pad. We're just going to kind of see what happens out here. As far as our abilities go, we've got a war cry. It's going to confuse enemies in an AoE in front of us. It can be nice for getting people off of you. We've got Rush, which allows us to charge at an enemy. We've got Stunning Blow, which does exactly what it sounds like. It stuns the enemy while dealing damage. And then we've got Wrath of the Highborn, which is a buff. So I'm going to put that over there. Every aspect of the UI in this game is, like, tailorable, and you can change it to be the way that you want it to be. Uh, we've got a Iron Male Armor right there. I'll wait for this guy to show up, and then we'll just smack him. We got a Wolf, and we had a Troll right there. We just picked up .85 gold pieces off the Troll. Let's go ahead and move through the forest, see if we can find any useful loot out here. There's some heavy armor right there. We can't wield it yet, but if it's enchanted, it's not enchanted. I was going to say, if it's enchanted, it'll be useful later. For now, it's not that great of an acquisition. We're looking for green items, blue items, orange items, pink items, anything that's going to set our playthrough ahead of the curve. You find a tattered page scrap, perhaps part of a diary. It's a gorgeous glade, but I could swear that it looked like part of a human femur. Saw an absolutely gigantic troll, but fortunately I threw him off my scent. Yeah, there is a big giant troll at the end of this dungeon, so watch out for that. He's definitely capable of killing you if you're not careful. Uh, we do have a few other abilities you want to be aware of because you're going to be using them pretty heavily. You have Regeneration, which does exactly what it sounds like. It's an inscription on your body, basically like a tattoo that allows you to rapidly regenerate health. We've got Infusion of Healing, which is another kind of tattoo and another scribe tattoo. That's going to allow you to heal yourself in a burst and then eliminate one poison that's on you or one wound 
I guess. It's a pretty good ability. I use it pretty frequently. In fact, we can pop it right now. The cooldown on it's super short because this game is crazy deadly. And so everything in this game has a really short cooldown. It's entirely possible to pop your healing spell three and four times in one combat in this game. Just because that's the way she goes. Oh, he's a little bit tough for us. Let's go ahead and heal up real fast. Uh, the difference between these two, in case you were wondering, this one right here is instant. It doesn't cost you a turn. This one right here will cost you your turn. So after you pop it, the enemy will hit you. So the time to use regeneration is when you're at like half health, not when you're at like 20% health because you may get one shot and killed before you get any positive benefit from the effect. I'm going to pop the regeneration right now. We're getting attacked by bugs and fleas and everything else that infest the forest. Another 1.2 gold right there. We've got a magical wizard hat of light. I'm not really a wizard, so I probably won't end up using that. We may equip it just for a little bit, just to have something in an empty slot, but it doesn't really matter. You may notice that I'm auto-picking up items. You don't do that in the default version of the game. The default version of the game, you're going to press G to pick up any item that you're standing on top of, but I have the chest of transmogrification, and so I auto-loot everything that I step on. It puts it inside the chest, and then inside the chest, it's like a bag of holding. It's weightless. It has no mass. And then at the end of every zone, everything inside the chest is destroyed and turned into gold. And it just it streamlines, it streamlines the game and makes it go faster. At the end of each map, they'll give you an option to look at everything inside the chest and decide what you want versus what you don't want. So you have to worry about missing out on any loot or anything else like that. But it is a really useful item. And like ever since I found it, my gameplay is much easier because I don't have to run back to town to sell loot anymore. It saves you a lot of backwards trips. Uh, I think the exit to the zone is probably down this way, maybe. Possibly? Hey, we found a Zircon. That's pretty sweet. I like Zircons. Ooh, there was a staff down here. An Elm Vile Staff of Warding. Once again, not really for us. Not really the loot of a warrior. We don't want to lose any reputation with our warrior friends by walking around with a staff when we're a man that specializes in beat stick proclivities, okay? Uh, I can actually just, yeah, you can auto-move out of here. It's not that big of a deal. We'll just use the mouse for a second to get myself out of there so I don't have to find my way through the trees. Uh, we do need to find the exit to the zone, though. I think, ah, it's behind there. Okay, we'll change the level right here. And as you can see, that's the transmogrification chest right there. We don't really need, I guess I can put on the wizard hat. I don't really want to, but we can put it on. Here we have a quest to escort a lost defiler. This is one of the randomly generated quests you're going to get from time to time. These are important because when you succeed at these quests, you get a passive boost to your stats, or they will teach you a new tree in which you can get skills, which for complex build making is very, very important and may rely on finding some of these people. Please help me. I'm afraid I lost myself in this place. I know there's a recall portal left around here by a friend, but I fought too many battles and I fear I won't make it. Can you help me? Yep, I will help you. Uh, you kind of want to... So I would stay nearby these guys. Eh, there's a troll right there. We can fight the troll. Hey, we got a marksman's copper ring. That's pretty sweet. We'll kind of wait and see where she goes. I don't know where the portal is, and I don't want her to die. Hey, we got a level up. Nice. I tend to not use... Oh, there's the portal right there. So she's going to travel along this road towards that purple portal down there. There's a forest troll. Where is he? Oh, there he is. I'll protect you. Don't expect these AI to protect themselves at all. They won't. Uh, so there it is. We escorted him. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. As a reward, we can get an improvement of our magic, an improvement of our cunning. We can learn the curse of death. We can learn the curse of defenselessness. Uh, we can get the curse of impotence. Or we can train in the talent of corruption and curses. I will probably go... That'll give us some more crit chance, which if we take the crit elixir later on in the game, there's a quest that gives you an elixir that increases your stats permanently, and there's an elixir that does crit. I don't know how much crit we get from plus five cunning, though. It can't be that much. Let's test it. All right, I'm now more cunning than I was previously. So that gave us five cunning right there. It looks as though our critical chance did not go up at all. We got to get past like a critical point, I guess, before we start getting the goodies out there. Uh, we do want heavy armor training from that one. We're going to try and get into plate mail about as soon as possible. For, for weapon wielders and people that fight in the front line, it's kind of important that you have plate mail, in my opinion. And so getting up to 26 strength, which I think is the prerequisite for the skill training for plate mail, is going to be... It's going to be something we want to endeavor to do. Oh my god, there's enemies everywhere. I mean, you can kind of replace plate mail by getting, like, an armor that has impenetrable on it that, like, doubles 
or like triples the amount of armor on a piece of gear. But we don't want to rely on RNG like that. You find a tattered page scrap, perhaps part of a diary. You're back again, but he's just a stupid old troll. It'll be easy not to let him get the wind of me. Inlet found a stash further on, but we had to turn back if you get this help. Okay. I will help. At some point. We have many large trolls that we need to murder before I can help, though. Uh, we also want to get our passive regeneration up. Oh, that was an enemy right there. Let's kill that thing. That weird little bush. It was looking at me funny. The bush was headed right for me. It had to die. Alright. It's not that I'm on a ridiculous berserker kill frenzy right now. It's just that the tree had to die. Oh, we got some gloves of dexterity. That's not bad. We can fiddle around with those. Take those for sure. Let's go ahead and put those on. So with the gloves of dexterity, those are going to give us a little bit of resist. They're going to add a little bit of damage to our attacks, it looks like, because they are temporal. Uh, they're rough, which I think adds armor, if I remember correctly. And then dexterity is going to add plus two to our dexterity, which is our dodge stat and our accuracy stat. So that's not bad. I'll take that. Being able to hit more frequently is a really, really good idea. You've collected a new ingredient, a length of troll intestine. Really? We just, like, cut it out of him like Kali Ma style? That seems a bit gratuitous. Like, he was already dead. Why'd we have to disembowel him on top of making him dead? You know what I mean? It just seems disrespectful. I don't know. Maybe he said something nasty about our heritage on his way to the ground. I don't know. I don't really speak trollish. So, unfortunately, that language is lost to time and space and ether. I want to be over there. Thank you. If you click the mouse, it'll find the path over there. So every now and again, if you find yourself getting stuck using the numpad, just use the mouse to click where you want to go real fast, and it'll get you there. Be careful about being on water. It is absolutely possible in this game to drown. Oh, nice. We got impenetrable iron mail armor. Impenetrable is a really, really good modifier on gear. Like, double. It adds, like, three or four armor to the gear piece. And armor in this game is one for one. So if you take, like, a 20 damage hit and you have 11 armor, it reduces it to nine damage. Assuming they don't have any AP rating or anything else like that. This game has a tremendously deep mathematical system behind it That can be used pretty extensively for builds oh, We got a brass lantern right there. I don't really need that right this second uh, The lantern is what's making the tiles around me light up and clear the fog of war as I'm walking uh, The only lantern that I would consider equipping is any lantern that gives you extra HP If you find a lantern that gives you like 60 HP just equip that and never unequip it for the rest of your career the Serpent's Glare. Thick venom drips from the Mind Star. So I think that's a weapon that's for mages. The Mind Star, I think, shoots lasers or something like that. It's been a really, really long time since I played a caster class in this game, so I honestly couldn't say with 100% fall infallibility. Uh, we can just sell it. I mean, we can have it... We've got a Marksman's Copper Ring. I do like accuracy. We'll take that real fast. But everything else looks like it's vendorable. It's only five gold that we're going to get out of that. But you never know. There might be something inside of a shop somewhere that perfectly fits what we're trying to do and adds a bunch of regen and damage and crit and all that fun stuff. Iron War Axe right there. Was there something down there? There was. There was another one of those evil bushes that's never attacked me, but for some reason I keep attacking and murdering them. We don't question it because it makes my adventurer feel better. It brings him happiness and joy. It promotes inner peace, murdering the bushes in between the actual, like, sentient, existent enemies. We were a little bit poisoned right there. I'm going to wait till we're going to level up soon. Some leather mail over there. Somehow I have my doubts that it's going to exceed the armor value that we currently have on our mail. But if you notice, every single piece of gear in this game, like all the armor, it has armor and then it has defense. Defense is basically your dodge chance. So some items promote dodging and like grazing hits more. And some things just go for flat damage negation and just say to hell with dodging. I've actually never made a super dodgy character in this game. I should give it a try at some point. It's just one of those things, like, my recommendation with this game is to pick a class and stick with it for, like, at least a week. And trust me, like, you will learn things about that class, and you will get good at, like, itemizing and figuring out how to play them. This game has a very, very strong meta, an almost deceivingly large meta around each of the classes. Whether you're playing Berserker, Spellblade, Rogue, every class plays differently and has kind of a different goal towards how you want to itemize them or how you want to build them. Oh, that is a named troll. That's the guy we're looking for. That's Prox the Mighty. So what we want to do is we're going to dash in on him and then we're going to stun him. He's now off balance, which means he deals less damage. We can also confuse him like so. 
It's usually a good idea to confuse him and then charge him right afterwards, but oh well. You find a tattered page scrap, perhaps this is part of a diary. Writing this in a tree and he's at the bottom of it, waiting. His club is the size of a tall dwarf. I don't think I'm going to make it. Alongside the note is a plan of the region. So yeah, there's a secret zone on the opposite side of this zone where there's an even harder troll, and if you can kill him, he can drop some pretty sweet gear. Hey, we got the mighty girdle off of our first drop. That's good. Uh, the drops are somewhat set, but somewhat randomized. If you think of like an MMO raid boss, how they have a table of like 15 things they can drop, but you only get two of them, that's basically the way this game works with bosses. Each of the bosses have like a loot table of things they will drop. We got two legendaries off of these guys, which are preset items that never change. The Mighty Girdle is a fantastic item because of the HP that it gives you. It also increases if you don't have the transmogrification chest. It's really good because it allows you to carry 40 more or 70 more pounds. It also gives you armor and lowers the amount of fatigue that you accrue from all actions. So that's really, really good. We've also got a bright brass lantern right there. That'll increase our sight radius, so I'll go ahead and put that on. I don't see anything else on the list that's jumping out at me as we need this right now, otherwise life sucks. And so I'm just going to ignore it and we're going to carry on. Carry on my way where it's flat. There is peace where trolls be at. Lay your weary sword to rest. Don't you cry no more. I don't cry. Splat never cries. Tears stay where they belong in the world of Splat. Inside your face. Now let's see here because we are a warrior. A warrior who feels no pain and no emotions other than anger. Uh, let's see. We've got the exit right here to the little secrety secret area. Let's do it. Uh, we'll want to level up before we fight this guy just to get our stats allocated because he is a little bit tougher. But I don't think we're going to die or anything else like that. In order to get heavy armor 3, we need 26 strength, so we'll boost that on up. Now we can wear plate mail with that skill right there. We can also increase our accuracy with all weapons and our damage with all weapons. Oh, I got no points left. Lame. Okay, well, instead, we'll go ahead and put some points right there, and then we'll get a little bit of basic regen. This right here allows us to regenerate our stamina. That actually gives us passive HP regeneration. At max level, you get like 10 HP per turn, which is really, really good, and it'll help you be quite a bit more resilient, especially if you use that in combination with vitality. You're going to be quite difficult to kill unless the enemy's hitting you with spike damage that is just unbelievable. Oh, we still have five points left. Let's put the five points into dexterity so that we hit a little bit more frequently. I'd like my accuracy to be good. Landing hits is really important when you're a berserker because you're really in the market of killing things before they kill you. That's the goal that most berserkers are going for in this game. The rock is loose and you can move it away. Well, there you go. And there's all of our little troll cohorts and here's the big dog. We're gonna stun him real fast. And then we're going to hit him with a war shout, which is going to lead into another stun, which is going to allow us the turn we need in order to regenerate. And then we're just going to keep on swinging, and he should go down easy peasy. There it is. So he's now dead. What did he drop? He dropped the sludge grip. Okay, that's not that great of an item. He also put down a rough leather sling and a warbringer's iron dagger. Not that great of drops, but we got the mighty girdle on the last boss. And we got a whole bunch of stuff that we can sell for a decent amount when we get to town. And so corrosive rough leather gloves of dexterity. Those are the same as what we have. Instead of temporal, they're corrosive though. So they deal acid damage instead of dealing other damages. Uh, we do have a thing called the Rod of Recall. We can click on that right now. And after 40 turns, it'll teleport us to the beginning of the dungeon. Uh, usually a useful item to have. I don't think we need any of these items right here, so I'm just going to go ahead and let them get vendor. We got 48 gold at the moment, which is not a lot, but it's something. It'll hopefully keep us in our seats. Uh, the next dungeon we need to do is the Ruins of Corpul. Uh, this is the world map. You're not going to be attacked on the world map. You can, however, find random events and random dungeons while walking around. It'll be like, you stumble upon a hatch, and it'll just like spawn a dungeon right there. Uh, in the starting area for humans, my recommendation on the order of things is that you do the Trollmire. After you do the Trollmire, you do Core Pull. After Core Pull, you do the Forest. After the Forest, you do the Crypt. That's my recommendation. Then once you get to there, you'll be like level 10, level 12. In there somewhere, you'll more than likely have a lot of legendaries and a lot of good gear. And then you can decide what it is you want to do. Because you'll be reasonably well set up to do whatever you want at that point. Uh, please help me. We've got a rogue here. Okay, I'll protect you. 
It's all good. This guy's probably going to give me some kind of stat boost. We'll try to stay with him. I don't know which way he's going to go. He's going to go up this way. All right. Well, then let's move on some diagonals and see if we can protect him. I'll get the chest later. So he's trying to go up this way. All right. Let's kill all the enemies in this direction. We've also got an Amatrine right there. Really, you want to be out in front of him in the direction that he's trying to travel and just kind of protect him from himself. Uh, I'm going to de-poison myself real quick. I'm going to wash out all you guys so that you're all confused and, like, not hitting me because me being hit is one of the worst things that can happen. Oh, good. We're all poisoned. Just go in the portal, bro. Go in the portal. Uh, we can get five dexterity, five cunning, or we can get heightened senses. We can get lacerating strikes. Your melee and range attacks have a 20%. Oh, nice. Lacerating strikes would be cool. I'll take that. I mean, in the interest of intelligence, I probably should have taken the plus five dexterity. Like, that was probably the most pragmatic decision. But lacerating strikes seem pretty cool, too. The chance to deal double damage on every swing would be nice. That's a protective aura right there. Don't worry about it. Ah, I found the accursed undead that plagued this nefarious dungeon. The skeletal fool was thankfully no match for me. I suppose it helped that he had no arms. I found myself an old shield that in spite of a few dents seems to be serviceable enough. Some of these rats are big, and giving them a strong bash with the shield helps stop their poisonous bites before I get the sword to their neck. I also found some gems. I may have to hunt around for more, not out of any personal greed, of course, but my noble quest requires that I gather resources to defeat the great evils in this land and back home. Diamonds are my favorite. They're so sparkly. So there you go. Tales of Majayal. It's not much of a looker, but I promise you, if you give this game the time of day, it is one of the best roguelikes ever made. There's like this game, there's Adam, there's Cataclysm DDA, there's Caves of Cud. Like all of those are like, you know, Dungeons of Dreadmoor. All of those are really, really venerable, solid roguelikes. And Tome strands proudly among their number as one of the most in depth. And it's actually, it's a strange game because it's really easy to pick up and play, but it's really difficult to memorize, like, all the stuff that's in the game in order to play well. So it's easy to pick up, hard to master, I guess, is the way that I would describe it. Oh, we might die right here. Pretty good chance we're going to die right here. Yikes. We got bandit attack. Luckily, I was able to confuse all of them. So it looks like we're okay. We've got an insulating pair of rough leather boots of void walking. I'm pretty sure I'm barefoot right now. So, oh, we've got prismatic plate mail as well. That gives fat resistances. Yeah, put on the plate mail and then also wear some shoes and a cape. There we go. Like, wearing shoes is important on any dungeon diving adventure. Just put the shoes on. There you go. Nice. My name is Splattercat. I cover indie games and sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile every single day in the world of indie gaming so that you don't have to. Today was Tales of Majayal, a probably a favorite of mine, I would say. I definitely recommend you check this game out, whether or not you download it for free or you end up getting it on Steam. If you like roguelikes, this is a must-have game. I'll see y'all later. Hit this video with a like if you wanted to see a little bit more. And aside from that, it's been a lot of fun, everybody. I'll see you with something hot and fresh tomorrow off the skillet.